Thank you. Hello, hello, welcome. Firepla fireplace sound and coffee, jazz, piano music. Some relaxing jazz. All right, well, welcome back, billionaires. So happy that you are here. Uh, my name is Vanessa Black, and we are diving into an incredible book this particular month. Uh, for the personal freedom side of our featured book. So every single book, every single month, if you're just joining us for the first time, we are reading two books a month, one on financial freedom, Isabel is reading every single month, and then I'm reading one on personal freedom. Because our mission here at Billionaire is to impact the lives of billions of souls all over the world to achieve personal freedom in their lives as well as financial freedom and um there's nothing better than to diving into some books to grow continue to grow every single day we're reading like monday through friday we're posting new videos here on our youtube channel based on these read with me sessions that we're doing um and the the feedback and the breakthroughs that have been taking place has been absolutely incredible you know it could be one sentence one paragraph one book that absolutely transforms you know, your life or, you know, is exactly what you needed to hear in that particular moment in your life. And so super excited that you are here. You're joining us in. Congratulations. And let's dive into chapter seven, which is law number seven out of the 10 laws that Stuart Wilde is diving into in this particular book, The Little Money Bible, 10 Laws of Abundance by Stuart Wilde. It's a very little, short, awesome, awesome book. Very powerful though. And um, just been really, really amazing. So chapter seven, page 65, if you have a physical book, the law of money and ego, this is a short chapter here. So excited to invest the next 15 to 20 minutes with you. All right. So the concept here is the function of the ego among other things is not, is to concentrate on keeping you alive and to give you an identity. Okay. That's the function of the ego is to concentrate on keeping you alive and to give you an identity. The ego wants to separate you from others. Ooh. The ego wants to separate you from others, so it's naturally competitive. It believes in and promotes exclusion rather than inclusion. The ego needs specialness, distance, and separation from others to feel okay, and to go beyond its fears and insecurities. The number one ego-driven force fuel it, fueling the planet, other than sex, is money. Money is a symbol of importance, and feeling important allows the ego to believe itself distant from other people. When there is distance, the physical body of the person in which the ego dwells can be observed. As I said in law number five, at a subatomic level, our reality exists in a hazy state. It's nowhere and everywhere. It's only when you observe something that, is become, that it becomes solid. So the ego likes to establish observers. I explained in Whispering Winds of Change, which I think is a book, how in order for you to observe something, you must be distanced from it. Okay, let's, let's, let's dive into that real quick. So if you're looking, let's say you, you are looking at this screen right here. You're watching this YouTube video. You're observing this video. You're distant. You're distant from, from it. Same thing. Anything that you could observe, you're distant from. Okay. So distance, elitism, and specialness play to the ego's tune. This is why ordinary people adore the famous and like to associate with them. Because celebrities have so many observers. They seem to exist in a well-defined particle state and thus give the illusion illusion 
that they are more solid and secure than ordinary folks. They seem very real and larger than life, not in the usual hazy wavy state of other strangers. So they are seen by the millions as special glitzy particles. This helps ordinary people feel that their own energy is higher and safer because they have bumped into a celebrity's famoso of extreme particle wonderfulness. It's all a bit silly. It's an illusion. Celebrities are not more secure than you are. Usually they are very insecure and neurotic. The ones I've met anyway. And of course, no one can permanently pick up your energy. You have to raise it yourself. Anyway, there is no higher low. There is no higher low, is there? But the idea of importance and specialness excites people and it sells newspapers and advertising, but it is not real, is it? The trick is not to fall for all this specialness routine. It's an ego trip and it burns, burns loads of energy trying to convince people that you are okay or trying to get them to admire you and see you as special, waste time. In the end, it will cost you money. Once you establish such a view with others, you're a big shot and you have to pay for dinner. <laughs> you can buy fancy cars and spend loads of your hard-earned loot or hard-earned money sustaining a theater. That gets you the odd ego boost but it doesn't get you permanent happiness, serenity, and harmony. And it doesn't take you to the oneness in all things. In effect, it carries you away from your spirituality and from God toward the illusion. If things go wrong, your ego will take it all personally and you'll become sad and morose. That's why people take money so seriously, not because it keeps them housed, fed, and comfortable, but because of their need for attention and specialness. Once you detach yourself from the ego's need for attention, once you've worked on yourself and granted yourself worth, regardless of how imperfect you think you are, then you don't need admirers and observers. You become a self-observing individual, a free individual out from the manipulation of the ego and the world of glamour addiction that dominates so many these days. As you become free of these impositions, you begin to detach from the life and death struggle the ego goes through. Suddenly, your relationship to money changes. You are no longer scared and holding on to every scent with a vice-like grip, you relax. For you see how money is often just a game. The ego sucks you into for its own ends. It's one of the ways the ego controls you, keeping you edgy and stiff and in prison, brainwashed into accepting its ideas. It's difficult for most to understand how that stiffness and fear causes them to miss opportunities. Unravel the baggage, shift your mind about the need for importance and specialness, and suddenly you are free. After all, what you really need is a happy, liberated, creative life. Seeking admirers and observers is for the weak, and insecure. You are not a performing dog, acting out, hoping for attention in a tasty morsel. It's degrading and debilitating, and spiritually, it's rather ugly. There is no greater abundance than the abundance freedom offers. To unshackle from the ego's manipulation of you is to transcend. It's a hair breadth from total enlightenment. What is the point of being enormously wealthy if you're neurotic and scared? What's the point of being famous if it means you create for yourself a luxury prison of sadness and loneliness, surrounded by yes men and minions, but without the company of real friends who love you, who accept you unconditionally, people you can love in return? 
As I said in the book, the trick to money is having some, quote, money making is not a serious business. It is a game that you play. At first, it may seem that it is a game you play with the forces outside of yourself, the economics of the marketplace, so to speak. But as you proceed, you discover that it is actually a game that you play with yourself. Detaching from the seriousness of money involves moving from ego-oriented ideas to a spiritual comprehension of money. That's, that's a great line. I'm going to repeat that. Detaching from the seriousness of money involves moving from ego ideas to spiritual comprehension of money. Once you're no longer separate from the rest of the world and you have joined the infinite self within you are back in the divine light that connects us all. You see the evolution of the earth plane as a combined evolution of all the souls upon it. So rather than grabbing and pulling to make your assets and valuables separate from everybody else's, you realize that you are a part of everything and everything is a part of you, which means of course, that everybody's money and wealth becomes your money and wealth. This helps you enormously because it opens you up to possibility of receiving large amounts of other people's money without having to actually do any work, like winning a lottery, finding money in the street, coming upon a fantastic money-making opportunity or whatever. Poverty is established by the separation the ego creates. It's the root of poverty consciousness, if you like. By becoming a part of all things, you create an abundance consciousness. Seriousness is a disease of the ego. Seriousness. Life isn't really serious. It's just a short journey. Yes, there may be pain, anguish, and other negative emotions in your life, but those negative emotions are generated by contradictions of the ego. The ego wants life to go one way, and then circumstances come along and contradict it. Our journey on this earth plane, when viewed in its spiritual context, is a completely positive experience. Seriousness warps your life and disconnects you from your childlike self. The creative power inside you is childlike. And creativity equals money. If you deny yourself access to the child within you because you're too serious, you also block your connection to the divine light and your feminine self. All right, who's ready to have some fun and not be so serious? Every creator who's any good uses their feminine side to create with whether a scientist working on a hunch, a painter working on the interplay of colors, or a musician dealing with the juxtaposition of notes and chords. The feminine principles are soft and they appeal to human feeling. In fact, creativity is the only evidence left of our societies once they've come and gone. We don't remember the businessmen of Rome or the various generals that fought the Trojan Wars. Even the kings and queens of old are fairly, fairly uninteresting. What we value is the art, the architecture, and the feelings of bygone societies, what they believed in, what they did, the art they left behind, the Colosseum, Versailles, paintings, books. Those are the things that have meaning, and so they last. We remember the yin because it is through the yin and softness that the God force is expressed. So if you are a little too serious, lighten up, dude. Try to make light of life. Embrace its childlike beauty. Being too grown up is a serious and painful experience. Don't mess with it too much. <laughs> if you if you were able to hear how he actually speaks, it's really, I'm trying to like emulate how he speaks in the audio. But that's how he's like, don't mess with it, dude. It's a painful experience. Okay. The metaphysics. The metaphysics of money and ego are simple to understand. You're an oscillation of energy. You're a feeling. If having and not having money is linked to your ego's perception of itself and your overall perception of your self-worth, your emotions will be on a roller coaster 
and that will affect your body. When things go wrong, the check bounces, money not flowing, your energy will drop. You'll feel defeated, weaker, and less than before. If you are locked into the ego's perception of life and things go wrong, it can make you unwell. Somehow you have to come to the truth, the metaphysical truth of your divine specialness. This is not a specialness that you poke in people's faces, but a silent specialness. It's the act of accepting the infinite beauty within you. Then the ups and downs of money are irrelevant. To get to the point, to get to that point of view is not an overnight process for many because everything we ever hear tells us how important status is and how lacking we are. All advertising is there to remind you of what you haven't got. Its function is to stimulate the desire by subtly showing you an inadequacy. Often advertising, advertising uses subliminal fear mechanisms. You don't want to be fat, do you? And therefore rejected by others. So buy these special foods. You don't want to, you don't want wrinkles, do you? And therefore be lonely and unloved. Rub this useless cream on your face. You want admirers, don't you? Buy this glitzy car that will fall apart in two years. Advertising also stimulates debt. Debt is a form of leaning. A bit of debt, manageable debt is okay. Lots of debt topples you over. It takes you into fear and negative emotion, which affects your energy. Once the energy starts to wobble, you have less protection from outside forces and psychic and psychic intrusion, and you may experience even more fear, get depressed, and so forth. The way the government and the media play to the ego is an insidious control trip. It's designed to make you a prisoner. The only defense you have against TikTok's bombardment of you is to detach. By detaching from the need for observers and decoupling the idea of money as a status symbol, you disempower the ego which allows you freedom. You can just be you and free. Yes, you can have aspirations, dreams, and desires, but they shouldn't be obsessive. You have to live life in the meantime, and you have to have fun. If you're not having fun, something is very wrong. Are you having fun? That is the question. Look upon money as a driving force of your creativity. See it as a solidified love and don't use it as a security device. Then your emotions will be stable and you'll be liberated and stress-free. Use your money to buy fun and lightheartedness. Action. As I said in the concept section, lightening up and becoming less serious is a key the key to changing money from an ego symbol to what it actually is, a symbol of appreciation of energy. It's part of becoming less and less complicated. Most people are tied up in knots. Their life takes endless management and sorting out. Take action, toss out stuff, gently and kindly get rid of people you don't need and sell assets that are a drain on you. Manage your time better and get rid of all your superfluous commitments. Stay in the pocket and keep it all simple as possible, given your circumstances. This way, you'll come to the childlike self. When you find that inner child, parent it, nurture it, and look after it. That action of itself will grant you all the security you will ever need. You can never reconcile your life unless you rediscover that inner child and learn to keep it happy. Go to a toy store and buy yourself some games. Play in the rain, roll in the mud, or whack your face into a cream pie. I was once in La Di Da restaurant in San Francisco with my ex-wife, my little boy, some kids, and a bunch of other relatives and friends. It was a very expensive restaurant, extremes of la-di-da with lots of very serious 
important people dining in whispers, having dual, dull dinners. At the end of the meal, I ordered a whole bunch of gooey merengue pies. It wasn't on the menu, so the chef had to make them up, especially for us. The maitre d' ceremoniously brought the pies out and the place one in front of each of us. We were 10 at the table. We waited for a second or two, staring at the pies. Then on the count of three, each of us at the table picked up our pie and whacked it in the face of the other person sitting to our left. We all we all gave and we all received. The children went ballistic, laughing their heads off. We fell to the floor in hysterics. We couldn't contain ourselves. The maitre d' was shocked. There was sticky merengue everywhere. Some of the other customers were laughing, fit to burst. Others were absolutely appalled. And they probably never gone back to the restaurant again. The sugar and the merengue stings your eye a bit, but boy, did we have fun. If you're never done something like this, try it. Being lighthearted is angelic, and being angelic is being infinite. It's a great. Being lighthearted is angelic, and being angelic is being infinite. And being infinite is easier than being stuck with a bunch of boring grown-ups who fret over their investments and who strut and work hard to pay out money for stuff that doesn't make them happy. If you are suffering from negative emotions or pain, internalize it and work on it on your own. Do not project it onto others. You have to be responsible and own your own pain. Sure, you can talk about it to a therapist or you can share your troubles with a friend, but in the end, you are your pain. It's personal to you. You don't have a right to project it onto others, leaking anger and disquiet, spoiling their energy by dolloping your stuff upon them. That's bad karma, as, in, as is manipulation, vengeance, and nastiness. As part of setting you free and liberating you from fear, don't bother to push and shove and compete with others. If they need to be hot shots, let them. If they need to prove how clever they are, let them. Act simple and just listen. It's a good discipline. If they need to be first, step aside, let them pass. The sun will rise at exactly the same time for everyone in the neighborhood, no matter who rushes ahead or who ambles along at peace with him or him herself. It's the belief that you have to compete that creates lack and the fear of lack. Once you raise your energy, you don't need to compete. And once you don't need to compete, you're no longer scared. When you are no longer scared, you resonate a stronger energy. More people show up and you can build them all the more. These laws of money are so simple. Wow. And that concludes the law of money and ego, which was law number seven. Super powerful chapter. You know, let us not be so serious. Life is not serious. He says, if we're not having fun, something is wrong. So it's sometimes being lighthearted, detaching from all of what society puts on you and letting go, being childlike, nurturing the inner child within you. And yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful chapter. And I'm excited to continue to dive into the next chapters but looking forward to hearing your feedback. Hope you got tons of value from it. And chapter eight, which is page 75, if you have the physical book, is the law of giving and receiving. And we're going to dive into that in the next chapter. All right. Hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Go out there, have some fun, detach from all the beliefs that, you know, society puts on you and and just reflect upon that. It is life is not so serious. And if we're taking it serious, something is wrong. Okay, if we're being so serious about everything, something is wrong. Okay, detach. If, pe 
it's like you're observing people if they feel like they need to be first if they feel like they need to be you know show off or what let them do it let them go ahead and do it it's a silent power silent awareness that you're aware of you're free you're liberated you're happy you're staying creative and having fun you know so hope you enjoy this as much as i did we'll see you in the next free with me session very soon have a beautiful rest of your day Talk to you soon.